Welcome to Tech Photo Blog. This is episode number nine. This week I'm going to be talking about the Photogate sensor. So this is another one of those sensors you can plug into the camera axe. And the way this sensor works is it has an IR LED in one of these posts and a photo transistor in the other to detect the light coming from the uh, IR LED. And when nothing's between these two posts, there's a high signal sent back to the camera axe. And when something's between these two posts, then a low signal is sent back to the camera axe. So there's a lot of different uses for this kind of a, a sensor, like droplets, um, projectile photography, and a bunch of other things. And it is true that I have uh, specialized sensors for a lot of those things, but this sensor is just a lot smaller, more durable, uh, and a lot less inexpensive than those more specialized sensors. So a lot of people go with this sensor instead. So this is a great sensor to have around. So now I'll demonstrate setting up the camera axe to use the Photogate sensor. The first thing I'll do is plug in the flash into camera flash port number one. This could be a camera, but generally you use flashes for high speed photography. And then I'll plug in the Photogate sensor into sensor port number one. Now I'm just holding down activate while turning on the camera axe to reset it to defaults. So the default settings for the camera axe will work well um, for trigger sensor. Uh, the delay, you may want to increase this um, depending on what you're photographing. Uh, this is just a number you've got to play around with until you get it to the right value. Uh, the bulb, you don't need to change that for this sensor. Uh, if you're not, if you're using a flash, then you don't want to change the prefocus um, to yes. But if you're using a camera, you might want to change that to get a, a lower shutter lag. The trigger type, um, so, and then the trigger value. You can see that second value there, that 999. That's the current value, and if I block the uh, photo gate, it drops down to 23. So what that means is we want to trigger when something goes between those two posts. So we want to trigger on a low value. So I'll change this to low. And anything between, you know, 998 and um, 23 would work, so I'll just leave it at 800, you know, right in the middle would be 500, that might make sense too. Um, but they'll both give you the same results, and the power doesn't really matter on this sensor. So, when I hit activate, it's now ready to fire, and as soon as I put my finger between here, it triggers. That's pretty much it for this sensor. Thanks for watching.